Well, hello everybody. I'm Daniel, and today I'm here to talk to you about the cube. Huh? That's right. I'm going to use this cube to demonstrate something that is largely misunderstood in the Bible. I know that's hard to believe. What, people misunderstanding something from the Bible? I know that's ridiculous. But occasionally, it does happen. And so, not only do a lot of non-Christians not understand this, but unfortunately, most Christians also get it wrong. And that just adds to the frustration of the issue. And so, I'm going to talk to you about the word repent. You hear that word tossed around a lot in the religious realm? They say things like, you need to repent and get right with God. And technically, that's true. That is a biblical principle. We do need to repent and get right with God. But, before we can do that, we need to find out, what in the world does that mean? Well, I'll tell you what it doesn't mean. It does not mean to stop sinning. Let's think about it, because if you could stop sinning, well, then you wouldn't need God, would you? No. So there's got to be a little more to it than that. So if, uh, if you actually look it up, repent, it means to change one's mind, to regret, to turn away from. And so if you look in Hebrews chapter 6, you'll see that it's talking about laying down the foundation of repentance from dead works. Okay, so what's the foundation? Well, it's repentance from dead works. Okay, well then what are dead works? Well, if you read on the next couple of chapters, you'll see, like Hebrews chapter 10, it's talking more specifically about Old Testament rules and regulations, like blood sacrifice, uh, ritual washings, all the different Old Testament legalistic whatnot. And today, we don't necessarily do a lot of those same things, but we do have our own works of self-righteousness. And so those are more along the lines of, oh, I don't know, um, giving money to the poor, helping to, to feed the hungry, uh, volunteering at the soup kitchen, helping little old ladies across the street, being active in the PTA, uh, helping to coach your, your kids' little league team, and stuff like that. Now, these things are good, and don't get me wrong, we should do good things. Yeah, that's why we call them good. But... The thing that we don't want to do is we don't want to get confused and start, start thinking that our good stuff is going to earn us anything. Alright, because look at this. If I work really hard, maybe, just maybe, I can master this thing and, and it will all be solved and perfect. And look at that. I've got it all figured out. I deserve good things. Yeah. Well, see, here's the deal. You can fool some of the people most of the time. And you can fool most of the people pretty much all the time. But the one thing that you can never do is fool God. Because see, God sees everything. Not just the outward appearance, but everything. He knows the thoughts of your mind. He knows the intent of your heart. He knows you better than you know yourself. And if I go to a competition, am I going to get bonus points for being mostly solved? No. I'm going to be a loser just like everybody else. And that's the way it works in God's kingdom. Because my self-righteousness is only going to take me nowhere. The Apostle Paul makes the point. He says all his works of righteousness were like filthy rags. So that's like saying, hey, God, look, look at what I made for you. Look at all the stinky, smelly rags. This one's like poo. Now, I need to look at my situation and realize, hey, I've got the right pieces in the right places. That's the green and the orange. It's just facing the wrong way. And over here I have... The orange and the blue, same thing. So both of these pieces just need to turn around. These pieces need to repent. Yes, these pieces need to repent and so do I. I need to change my mind about my works because while I'm focused on my works of righteousness, my back is on God. That's not good. So I need to turn away from, I need to change my mind about that and turn over here to God's perfect work of righteousness, which is through the life, death, burial, and resurrection of His Son on the cross. And while I'm focused on His righteousness, my back is turned on my own works. That's cool, because see, God's plan wasn't for us to, to get cleaned up and then turn to Him. No, we need to turn to Him now, 
Because Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And I don't need to turn back and focus on anything that's going on here because that's going to be very confusing and distracting. I need to stay focused on God. And while I'm focused on Him, He is going to make me right. And He's going to make everything perfect. And it's going to work out just fine. And that, my friend, is repentance. And that is the gospel, according to Rubik.